So folks, today Joe Biden came out of the gate running and swinging at Donald Trump. He said, I want to have a debate. Let's have a debate. Make my day, Donald Trump. And that's that's exactly the way he put it. And Donald Trump came out two hours later and said, of course, I'll have a debate with you. I don't think he realizes that there's some caveats to that whole debate procedure that Joe Biden wants before they, they get into it again. But think about this. Why did Trump wait so long to say that he would have a debate? Why wouldn't he have come out a month ago, a year ago, and said, let's debate? And I think it's because Trump has got this record now that he didn't have, you know, before. It was easy to take pot shots at Joe Biden when he had 50 years of political experience that he could take aim at. But now that Donald Trump has had four years at the presidency and done things like um, rolled back Roe versus Wade, the family separation policy, the tax cut and jobs act that benefited the rich. And how about that health care plan that was two, two weeks away, like almost four years ago? Whatever happened to that? right? We're going to tear Obamacare down. No health care for anybody. I got a better plan. It's coming out in two weeks. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, yeah. So folks, so uh, switching now to the hush money uh, situation. Oh, and before I get there, the caveats, yes, the, the caveats of the debate. First is that the mic gets cut off. I've got to tell you this. The mic gets cut off. Joe Biden said when it's his turn to talk, the same thing when it's Trump's time to talk cut my mic off Joe Biden said and then the other part of it is no studio audience so there's not going to be that dynamic of Trump saying something stupid the audience you know one or two people or whatever it is you know reacting to that that's where Trump gets his energy there's not going to be going to be any of that it's just going to be Trump Biden and the person asking the questions I don't think Trump realized that so turning now to the hush money trial you've got Michael Cohen uh, giving more testimony. And Joyce Vance was on Morning Joe, and she had this to say, some pretty high marks for Michael Cohen. Have a listen to this. First, let's talk about the testimony, Joyce. Michael Cohen was back on the stand. We turned from direct questioning to cross-examination from Donald Trump's defense team yesterday. What were your takeaways of the day in court? So look, it's still early times. There's another full day of cross-examination coming, but I think it's safe to say that Michael Cohen exceeded expectations. He, he kept a calm demeanor, and a big part of this is less the evidence that's coming out and more the way the jury perceives Michael Cohen. Hmm. More of the way that the jury perceives Michael Cohen, and he's coming across as honest and believable because I think he is. And a lot of people are saying, no, he's a liar. That man's a liar. He's a liar. He lied. He lied. Well, who among us hasn't ever lied? Who among us can cast that first stone? I mean, who among us has never heard Donald Trump tell a lie? <laughs> Truthfully. So to brand him, to try to brand him as a liar is not reasonable. And it's not sensible. The man is not a liar. He has seen the light, folks. And I want to show you this. So this is Joyce Vance again, and she's talking about what the judge, Mershon, is is telling the jury that they have to consider in this case. Have a listen to this. Uh, how, how do you think it's going uh, for the prosecution? You know, it is tough to say. What we're doing right now is we're listening to the story of all the evidence. I mean, America's obsessing line by line over the questions, but the judge is about to tell the jury, you have to find two things. Mm. You have to find that Donald Trump created or caused to be created false business records, and you have to find that he did that with an intent to defraud, an intent to commit or conceal another crime. We haven't really been looking at the evidence in that legal framework so far, but that that's what the judge will tell the jury they have to do. And that's a little bit different from listening to the story and saying, oh, I, I really think Donald Trump did this, which is more of the zeitgeist. On those you know, from my perspective, folks, I think that Donald Trump did create the false business records, not just in this situation with Stormy Daniels, the payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, but also at large with his business. I think we found that out. But in this particular case, yes, I think it's a little bit more clear cut. I think he, he did create the false business records with the intent. The intent is important. He did have the intent to defraud an election and try to withhold that information from the election. And folks, here's a man, 
and I've said this before, here's a man who can't even admit that he's had an affair. I mean, what kind of an, what kind of a man is he that he just simply can't admit that he's had an affair? And I feel sorry for Melania to have to put on a straight face and just listen to him continually say that he had no affair when we all know damn well that he did. And, you know, what kind of a position does that put her in? She just has to go along with it, I guess, right? I mean, it's it, it's crazy. But it's not as crazy as this, folks. <clears throat> so we've got this situation now at the courtroom where everybody is rushing to the courtroom. I talked about Brenna Burr, the attorney general for Iowa. She rushed there. Mike Johnson has been there. They're all rushing. But with Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, rushing to the side of Donald Trump in New York at this hush money trial, rushing in defense of a man who's had an affair with a porn star. I mean, Mike Johnson, I, I, if I were you, just, just push away from the desk and put your hands on the desk and give that some thought. My God, what am I doing? As a Christian, I'm rushing to the defense of a man who's had an affair with a porn star. I mean, and, and now he's he's saying that he didn't have it, of course. I mean, and to say that you're just going to believe what he says is, is nothing uh, unlike a bunch of BS, really, because, I mean, we all know that he's had an affair, I think. I mean, it's my opinion, obviously, but, I mean, don't tell me, Donald Trump, that you haven't had an affair with Stormy Daniels. I mean, the testimony as sick as it was, you know, hearing all of that, I, I, I believe, I mean, so here he is. I mean, he's rushing in defense. And so what they're all trying to do, they're creating this carnival atmosphere, rushing to Donald Trump's side. And it got even worse today because, or yesterday, because they all rushed there. And I'm talking about Tommy Tuberville, the governor of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, and a bunch of other congressmen. And what did they do to make the point of speaking on behalf of Donald Trump. They all had blue blazers on, white shirts, and red ties. I kid you not. You talk about a carnival, folks, and they talked about this on Morning Joe, in addition to some of the things that Tommy Tuberville said about the jurors. Have a listen to this. The courthouse on Monday, where among other things, he called into question the citizenship Come on, man. of the jurors <laughs> serving on the trial. <laughs> Dope. Mental anguish is trying to be pushed on the Republican candidate for the president of the United States this year. Mental That's all anguish. this is. He's been here a month. He's been here a month. I am disappointed in looking at the American, supposedly American citizens in that courtroom. Supposedly. This judge has pretty much got everybody hogtied, I would call, uh, from uh, President Trump on down, anybody on his side. Hopefully we have more and more senators and congressmen go up every day to represent him and be able to go out and overcome this gag order. And that's one of the reasons we went, is to be able to speak our peace all for President Trump. <clears throat> Supposedly American citizen, says oh Senator God. Tuberville. Donald Trump was joined in court yesterday by more of his allies who are willing to help him get around that gag order. Among them, House Speaker Mike Johnson who repeated many of Donald Trump's false claims about the cases against him. The man who was second in line to the presidency also criticized Michael Cohen's testimony and attacked the judge's daughter well, on really, behalf let of the me, former let president. Let me ask you something. What would happen if Nancy Pelosi went oh. to Hunter Biden's trial and attacked the key witness against Hunter no, Biden really. and then attacked the judge's daughter? Let's just play that game out for wall a second. Wall-to-wall wall I mean, coverage, I mean, full meltdown. Full Chernobyl. Full meltdown. Well, it's something full she meltdown. wouldn't do because Of course she'd never do it. Uh, uh, Alex, do we have the suits, the, the matching outfits? I think that's, do we have that That's clip? the picture no? of the All day. Right. Let's go to chart. There, si there si is. Cyborgs yeah. so, from the multiverse. So this is all the, uh, the men who showed up to support Donald Trump yesterday, a Republican congressman, a governor of North Dakota doing, of course, the people's business of North Dakota by being in lower Manhattan. Vivek Ramaswamy <laughs> was there as well, yeah. all wearing the same suit and the same tie, nice. the red tie favored <laughs> by Donald Trump. Uh, Charlie Sykes, what do you see oh in these images? Oh God, folks, all the sycophants, they're all just lining up. You know, it's sickening. They all want something from a Trump presidency, don't they? They all want something, and the carnival continues. Just, just stay tuned, folks. There'll be more. Till next time.